What's going on guys? I'm here with Paul Rodriguez, legendary skateboarder, founder of Primitive. We are here to talk some sneakers today, see some of the shoes he has in his collection. Not exactly all of his collection here, but just some of the stuff you're skating recently. Yep. So excited to talk about it with you and thanks for coming on the channel. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Sweet. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Here now, P Rod. All right, so I see on this wall here, we have a lot of more recent pairs. So I see you yeah. skating a lot of recent pairs on Instagram. What do we got here? So this is kind of like this whole, these few rows here are kind of just like my everyday, kind of like pop them on and go, depending on what outfit I'm having, you know. If I'm out skating, it's usually a pair of dunks. Uh, I have a bunch of different dunks here, just depending on, you know, you gotta match and feel good. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I got a couple pair of Jordan just for like, if I'm just hanging out, just cruising. Always, you know, it's good to have some white Air Forces. Actually, I could, I could use a Rhea, but they're always <laughs> out of them. So those are like the hardest shoe to get right now for me. I got some LeBron Space Jam right here. These ones I like to work out in. Mm -hmm. um, then gotta have the slides just to cruise around and just, yep be comfortable but yeah it's just kind of my day-to-day -day. couple pairs actually I haven't worn in a long time these are like my p-rod tens that I actually haven't worn these in a while they're just kind of chilling a few of the shoes up here around here don't really get much use like another pair of p-rod tens I kind of just keep them on ice and whatnot but uh yeah, it's kind of my just my day to day. Is there a rhyme or reason with sneakers you're picking, like these right here? Is it a pair that came in that you're like, I'm just gonna skate these, or did you seek any of them out? No, luckily with the SB stuff, uh, I'm really spoiled, and you know, I'm grateful for that. Of course, yeah. these kind of just show up. Scuba Steve, shout out Scuba Steve. He's our team manager. He's the guy I called I call when I need shoes. But like a lot of times, he'll just send it ahead of time when they come in, um, and I'll just have new different color sneakers he knows that i mainly like skating dunks these days so he'll just send a lot of those i like skating the eye shots as well it's got good uh cushion so when you're jumping stairs and they just kind of show up in lots of different colors i'm, I'm not really too picky on colors mm -hmm. sometimes I, I keep it basic sometimes if it's a little more popping and i got like a good shirt or something that will go with that yeah I'll, I'll i'll go a little more loud um it just really depends on the day and, and the outfit and then what you're feeling yeah and then i kind of just go from there there's really no no rhyme or reason um it's either i'm chilling kicking it in some shoes or i'm gonna go skate so sweet and that yeah. kind of leads me towards your iconic collaboration as of recent happened last year mm -hmm. the what the pause that came out yeah. Can you give us a little bit of insight behind that the culmination of all that because i think that kind of shook the sneaker world the skate world everything for you'd be able to do that put all the different shoes together yeah. so Let's hear about it from you. Yeah, that one, that, uh, I, like I was just telling you a little bit ago, I, that surprised the hell out of me. Like, I yeah. felt good about the idea. It mm -hmm. felt like, you know, uh, it felt like a strong idea, but I just didn't know it was going to get the kind of uh, love and recognition mm -hmm. across different cultures that it did. Um, and basically, you know, uh, as I'm sure most of your viewers are familiar with the original What the Dunks, that's yep. where it came from in my mm -hmm. mind. You know, I feel like we were having a meeting, a Zoom meeting. It was still during like when COVID was, we were all locked down. They wanted me to do a dunk. I had done a dunk the year before these boxing inspired dunks. I'm yep. a big fan of boxing. And uh, that one was pretty cool. Got, you know, pretty well received. And mm -hmm. so they were like, all right, let's do another dunk. Okay, cool. And I just, I didn't have really a concept. I forget what we were even talking about. We were towards the end of the meeting, about an hour in. And we were like looking at uh, or talking about a certain concept. Like, okay, we feel good about this one. And I was in my little office upstairs and I'm just looking around. I'm kind of looking around, a little memorabilia and just things from over my career. And I'm like, it just came to me like, wait a minute. Like what, you know, what the dunk? What if we did a, a what the Paul? And everyone was like, that's genius. That would, that would be the perfect idea. Yeah. And so I literally got out a paper and pencil and like over the next week or so just kind of just drew it out with the different patterns of the different shoes and kind of like I took photos of it and would send it to the yeah. designers. And of course they did a much better job because they used a lot of the like quick strike releases that we had from over the years. I was just taking colorways from like the general releases uh -huh. uh, and they really like stepped it up and, and, and made it what it is. So it was just, uh, I got to the point where it, was just, it hit me like, wow, I'm still here after all these years, still yeah. at Nike, still designing shoes. I got 10 signature shoes under my belt. like. What can we do? And it just came to me like to 
hey, let's just mash them all together and run off that concept of the What the Dunk, because that was a huge hit when it ori mm -hmm. originally came out. So that's really, really what the idea was behind. It's crazy. I mean, I think that's this generation's What the Dunk, because the What the Dunk obviously is so iconic. We all know. We've had a couple pairs on the channel. We've run through them, and when those got announced, we were all just like, these are crazy. And I, I mean, I couldn't get them off release, so I had to go on the resale market. I got them, paid a lot of money, but I had them, but we were into the ground. So I, I love the <laughs> shoes, just everything about it. And so um, I just think there's a lot of people in the sneaker world who appreciate them. And uh, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, of course. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you guys for embracing it the way, <laughs> the way everyone has. It's, it's literally like, to me is so special because it's literally my life's work. Like my full yeah. career, blood, sweat, and tears, the good times, the bad times, ups and downs, everything is in this shoe. Like I couldn't just, it's not just a concept you can just think of and put together. Like I, I had to live the concept. Yeah. And the fact that all these years later, it, it, it came to this, like that that's what's special to me is like, it was, it's literally something I had to live through for it to exist, so. Yeah. Made these, uh, these 3D printed versions like of all my shoes. Wow. Gave me a. We can show that if you oh, want yeah, to. Show that. Sure. It's actually of like actual shoes they had in the um, kitchen. Because uh, you look at some of them, it has my signature from an actual oh shoe gosh. that they had there that they. I don't know if they scanned it and reprinted it and it printed it out with the signature on wow. it. Like, it was That's pretty crazy. so crazy. So, what is the material? Uh, like, some type of resin or whatever. That's crazy. 3D printers kind of make, but like, so it starts off with the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then the tens. All right, so do you have any specific name for this room? Is this just kind of like your collectibles room? Um, I guess, so my ex-girlfriend actually designed this room. She would call it the mud room. So the that's kind of, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of what it is. The mud room, it's like where you put all the overflow of stuff, but kind of organized so it mm -hmm. doesn't look like a big mess. This is just where I kind of keep, you know, obviously my shoes, but just little like memorabilia and just special little things to me that, that I like to have. Yeah, you mentioned maybe kind of digging around in some yeah, of these boxes, finding here. some stuff in here, because yeah, these are shoes and maybe we don't know what's in there. Yeah, I, I mean, I've had a lot of these here for years that I can't even remember what they are. You can see some sample tags down there too. Yeah, we can check into that, see what, what, what samples we have. See what these are. Oh, from my, my last dunk, these were the sample yep. pairs before they came out. They look to be the final samples. So yep. Everybody was came out for retail. Oh, these are samples of my of my eighth shoe. So at the time when this came out, this was kind of like Nike was really wanting to like be more into their technology and mm -hmm. like try out their fly wire in the skate world and kind of try something different. So. This is what that was. That looks like a really light shoe. It's super light, super like foamy. I think it was a little for skateboarding, a little bit ahead of its time because like mm -hmm. skateboarders at first didn't really embrace it. They're like, oh, it looks like a basketball shoe. You're a skater, like mm -hmm. yeah. keep it skate. But you know, see some Kobe vibes in there a little bit. Yeah, definitely. You gotta try try something. You know, sometimes you gotta get a little risky. It's not always gonna work, and sometimes it, it comes into style later on. Oh, these are cool. These were given to me by Mr. Cartoon. Put his tag on there too, that's cool. That's sick. 2P, Air Force Daddy did, my bad. And uh, Those are sick. Yeah, so shout out to Mr. Cartoon, man. He's always showed me love over the years. Fellow, fellow guy from the Valley, or living in the Valley now, I should say. Oh, these are another one from, he gave me a couple years ago too. He always, he always draws on it for me, so that. I always gotta keep it. Um, Cortez is here's the Cortez yep. he designed right here. So. These are special just because you know I really look up to him, really respect him, so he's always great to me. Oh, these ones actually were a collaboration I did uh, with Primitive and uh, DJ Clark Kent. He oh, designed that's awesome. He designed uh, three different shoes. He did a uh, my Hero Seven high top. He did a Dunk, and what was the third one that was in that collection? He he designed this colorway for it, so. Shout out to Clark, Clark Kent. Much love, my brother. Everything blends in and like I blank out. Oh, these are newer, yep. newer, newer dunks. Got the skate pair. Yeah, I'll probably end up skating those. Oh, this one a fan gave me. Um, they know I'm a big Bruce Lee fan. Painted them up for me. Customized. That's Customized awesome. them with the P-Rod 10s. See, now I always like to keep these type of yeah, things because so cool. I was really, really nice of them. P-Rod 9 bulk version. Liked skating, they felt really good, really light. Just more of a simple, basic, just 
pure skate shoe. Would you say that you have one of the uh, models that's your favorite to skate? Here with us? Or just in general, like out of the 10, like is there any that you're just- um, the, the 10s actually, I really love the way they skate. They were probably my most simple shoe design, but like someone bought them to me. I have a few pairs here. Some bought them to me just really like, I don't know, they just felt really yeah, cool. Just all clean. suede, super basic, clean, can kind of like, you can dress them up, dress them down. Also like the 10th shoe, it put me into the 10 club in Nike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm the only non-basketball player to be in the 10 club. Awesome. So, That's so very crazy. hyped for that. These are also real special to me. These aren't the original originals, but these are very special to me because like very few other people were able to get a Jumpman logo on yeah. their shoe that wasn't a Jordan athlete, mm -hmm. you know? So that's major. Obviously Michael Jordan being one of my heroes over the years, so growing up. So I have to ask, with having 10 pro models, you've got these shoes. We grew up skating. Our, when we grew up, we were like, the dream is gonna be to get your own skateboard. The dream is to be to have your own shoe. Mm -hmm. How does it feel, looking back all these years later, to to have culminated that and to, to be at this point? Oh man, I thank God every day. Every day when I wake up, every day when I go to sleep, I thank God, I can't believe this is my life. I can't believe I can just walk around in this house in my boxers and, and nobody can tell me nothing. Yeah. I, you know, I just just little things like that. Or you're a kid, you just you, I just feel like a kid. Like I can't believe I could just do what I want at any mm -hmm. point in time. And still, thankfully, to be healthy enough to still skate, still be with Nike on my going on my going into my 19th year with Nike, um, and still just feeling like I got a lot more to accomplish and do, but already knowing what's been done and the legacy it's I, I just I can't I can't even put it into words I'm yeah. like stuttering and stumbling over my words I don't, I don't know what to say it's just un it's unbelievable to me that's what happens when you love something you do and you're just in the moment and you just keep at it and you just love it and focus on that you never know you might look up one day and realize oh my god I did all this like how the hell did that happen yeah, yeah. and like growing up in that generation when you're skateboarding skateboarding was looked at as like a career like you're not getting a skateboarding career you're doing it because you want to skate you want right. to skate and do these right. things now it's like more there's more things that happen where it can be a career i would say social media mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that but back then it's just all out of the love and i think it stands out with anything basically. yeah i mean i started skating when i was just just before i turned 12 and you know mm -hmm. when you're that young you're not thinking about like oh what am i gonna do for my life for my yeah. career and it just i happen to found find this thing fall madly in love with it started to excel at it gain attention from people who you know can help put me in the right position and mm -hmm. Just kept at it thank god you know never had any crazy injuries or you know had anything to like distract me and mm -hmm. take me off that path I was able to like reach the pinnacle so you know a lot of a lot of luck a lot of blessings and just hard work. a lot of just passion love yeah. hard work All right, so we have some friends at a place called Project Blitz that had a pair of shoes they want us to bring by just to show you and see uh, if you remember them. So we'll have you open these up. It's not the shoe okay. in this box. This is a newer box, but okay. this is a, uh, a sample of oh, wow. the Chicago wow. T-Rod ones. When's the last? Wow. Do you have a pair of those? You I do not have here. a pair of these. No. You don't have a pair of those? I don't yeah. have a pair of these at all. Uh uh. Matter of fact, I don't even really remember these. I don't know how, <laughs> if, how, how many of these were made. I know, so they're very well connected and they have a lot of crazy sneakers mm -hmm. and we just went by the warehouse to go ahead and check out some of their stuff, but got the sample tag in there. And this colorway obviously is iconic. Chicago. Oh, dude, yeah, like, absolutely. Cause like, especially when I first got on, I was always talking about Michael Jordan. Every time mm -hmm. I would get go to the campus, like I would ask, uh, you know, they would send a driver to pick me up from the airport and I would ask them to park in the Michael, in Michael <laughs> Jordan's parking yeah. spot if he wasn't there, you know, like I was, I was obsessed with Jordan. So I was always, Always, this is uh, crazy, yeah. Wanted some stuff to like be connected to them. Yeah, this so awesome. It would be awesome if these released, but it's just so yeah, it's crazy. Yes. Yeah. I wish these released. I know. I'm like, yeah. can we call Nike, but can we get these to come yeah, out? Yeah, like, I wonder what the reason why they didn't release. Do a retro on That would be awesome. That'd be so cool. hey, it's, it's never too late. Yeah, right. Yeah, that should come out. What's next? That's retro. right, exactly. <laughs> just came out what 2005. That was 2005. Yep. yep. Damn, that long ago. That's crazy. Yeah. How time flies. Yeah, all right. Wow, thank you for that. That's that was, that was awesome. a real treat. The main thing you want to talk about is some of the newer stuff you've got going on. Mm -hmm. I know you have a, a few different collaborations coming out. Yeah, my latest thing is uh, is a thing uh, called ABD Collectibles. A friend of mine, another pro skater, Mike Mo. He he started this thing where it's kind of like virtual trading cards. You can go on on the website, buy little packs. And for this one, we did the the what the P Rod collection, so you can get 
different tricks in my video part that I released when the shoe came out and they'll come randomly in like little virtual packs, three, three clips per pack. And if you pull like a legendary card, mm -hmm which there, will, there was only 200 of those. If you pull a legendary card, then that will give you access to the actual physical card, which will look something like this. This is the, uh, the sample of it. And it's actually like a photo of me, of a trick I did in the video. And in each card has a piece of the actual shoe I was wearing in the video. And it'll come in like a nice plastic display case and everything and each card has a different part of the shoe so it'll always so cool. look different it's like the refractor card so it comes with a little like physical collectible as well so that was something that's really cool that it's really hyped to be a part of with him other than that you know we got primitive skateboards we just released our full-length video uh, in late May um, so that's going really well and we're just dropping a lot of collections we just did a, a collaboration with Tupac um, so that one's been really really cool for us. I'm sure I'll think of more, but now that we're right here, I'm just blanking out on, on everything, but you know, got a lot going on. We got a uh, street league contest coming up this mm -hmm. summer. I'm leaving to Florida because we have our first stop this weekend. So that's really it. Just skating still as long as God Thanks allows again. his body to work. Uh, I'm going to be skating. I guess a question on primitive, like what was, I didn't get into it much, but like inspiration is to be like, I want to start my own company. I want to get into this. What mm -hmm. was kind of the, the back thought on that? So the, the way it first started originally, it was a sneaker shop. Um, mm -hmm. Back in 2008, we, we opened and a friend of mine at the time, his name was Andy. He managed the skate shop that I used to be sponsored by. I was like the little kid who would come mm -hmm. in and just ask a million questions mm -hmm. and ended up making it. And so he, his thing was in retail. So as soon as I signed to Nike, he, he was the one who was like, we should open up a shop. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, you know, we'll open a shop here in the Valley and we'll have all the, the best sneaker wall, you know, in the Valley and blah, blah, blah. And we, eventually we did do that. And slowly but surely we started making a little bit, some shirts, some sweaters, a couple boards, and it kind of grew where other stores started asking us like hey uh, can we sell some of your boards and shirts and hats and whatnot in our shop and it kind of slowly expanded and then we kind of realized like wait a minute we kind of have a opportunity here as like to build an actual brand and then probably about five six years ago when like writing was on the wall that retail was in decline and everything was online we decided like okay let's fortunately let's shut down the store do an online store and let's just sell our boards and clothes to skate shops and online and, mm -hmm. and, and so we just went full-blown brand so kind of it wasn't necessarily the plan at the beginning it kind of like plan kept just presenting itself and evolving and, and it ended up kind of becoming what it is today which very proud of very proud to like be on this side of my career and help find new talent help find kids to help bring them up and help them live out their dreams of being pro skateboarders so like that's been very fulfilling for me really what's going on with it So these are all just different boards that are very special to me. Most of them are from like a contest win over the years. So I like to keep the board and trucks from over the years. This was just my first pro graphic ever. Kind of have, I have my tattoo there That's to so kind of cool. commemorate that. Street League Arizona, which one was this? X Games 2009, Tampa Pro 2010. And then this was the skateboard I was riding uh, in the in, in my third shoe commercial when Ice Cube made the appearance and Kobe made the appearance, today was a good day commercial. So here was the board I was riding on the big trick, Santa Monica triple set switch tray, 2009. So that's the actual. We were just talking about it on the way here and we like rewatched it and we're watching it again. That's crazy. That's, that's the that, yeah, that's the actual board right there. And then in my office room, we can go back there and check. I have the actual board like of the shot when Ice Cube runs over the board, the uh -huh. broken one. Oh I have my that God, one that's... too. That's legend. That's um, act so legendary. That's crazy. <laughs> Thank you. That's the board Ice Cube ran over. Wow. Uh, in the low rider. That's legendary. <laughs> you know, another board uh, won contest with. I'm gonna look like X Games medals down there. So sick. Oh, actually, this is this might be cool. So this was given to me when my tenth shoe came out. Uh, they made like special like leather ones giveaway. But what's so special about it, they made this box, it slides cool, but it came with this handwritten note. Handwritten note, Paul from Mamba. Wow. And uh, it's a note from Kobe. It was really cool. And uh, basically him just congratulating me on my 10th signature shoe and welcoming me, welcoming me to the 10 club. So that's this is absolutely really, incredible. really special, you know. Rest in peace, Kobe. And uh, 
this right here is very, very special to me. And then I guess we're right here. One other cool thing is these were given back to me after they were given to Michael Jordan and they were made in his size, Carolina, Carolina blue. And um, they gave him a few pairs and then one of his people, his handlers at Nike said, actually, you know what, can you sign a pair? We want to give it to the kid whose shoes these are. So right here it says, two p nice shoes, Michael Jordan. <laughs> like, that's like, I'm tripping on that. Cause like how many people have a pair of their signature Nike signed by Michael Jordan? Like it's supposed to be, the opposite you're supposed to try and get some jordan signed by yeah jordan, right, you know right. what i mean like it's crazy how like i have a pair of my shoes signed by jordan that's Dude, that's trips me out both of those right there michael jordan and kobe, kobe ultimate jordan. that's so crazy thank you so much for showing us that that yeah that's the top off of the video that's just like the big bang <laughs> that and then you got i got right here what the, else do we got yeah this handwritten letter uh that nas wrote in my fourth uh nike sb commercial for my fourth shoe handwritten by nas because he, he did the voiceover for that commercial this little bruce lee figurine was sent to me by bruce lee's daughter shannon lee that was a cool gift obviously the mama mentality book it's the last time i got to see kobe uh got the book this is the board i was writing when i got my, my fourth x games win and um my friend who i was roommates with at the time like I always if i win a contest i save my board and i save the shoes these are the shoes i was wearing oh, man. and um and i saved my board and i had it in the house and i didn't notice i think scuba steve was like yo can you try to get that board without him knowing yeah. and he's like yeah and he snuck the board away i didn't even notice that the board was taken and then nike took it dipped it in bronze and gave me this present congratulations on an amazing season I'm always striving for perfection so awesome. that's cool this was another contest win board and just some like little like of my ads over the years that they gave me in like Greek league trophies I'm a loof money cup Pimp <laughs> cup trophy got to meet Bill Clinton when I was a little kid <laughs> my dad and my stepmom at the time my little girl who's now a teenager right here there's the low rider that ran over the board Oh, that's it. <laughs> my first Nike ad right there. Those are some of the boards I was was with girl at the time. That's great. What's your official name for the park? Uh, I don't know. We call it the showroom, the dojo, primitive park. I don't know that there's an official name. Just kind of whatever. Slang in. we come up with. Yeah. So now we're at the dojo, Primitive Park. Let's let's hear about this place. This is. Yeah. Thank you for having us out here again. This is. This yeah, is my pleasure. My pleasure. This was a dream of mine only just a couple years ago. Um, I had a pretty serious knee injury back in 2018. Tore my ACL. Had surgery. I and mean, during that time, I didn't know if I was gonna come back or not. And then as I started healing, I was starting to skate, feeling good. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I want to make a full come back and even before I hurt my knee I'd stopped really skating competitively and just only skated street and then like I just had this surge in me like no I want to know if I can make the full comeback I want to know if I can compete again I want to know if I can film video parts again so I was like I'm gonna need a place to really train and get yep. back in full form mm -hmm. and this place kind of evolved at first it was just like I just needed a simple spot to just have a little warehouse Put up you know a good skate course and just practice and train but then little by little one idea led to another so uh at the actual primitive primitive offices we work with these guys called futronics mm -hmm. and they do all our like lighting and stereo system the touch screen stuff over there at the offices and so you know when this place was getting built we were doing just basic certain things i was like oh, i just want a little area to have a tv or whatever so they did all that, but then they're like, yeah, well, we could do this, we could do that. And they were like, oh, we could do some interesting lighting. And then next thing I know, I was like, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, let's do that, let's do that, let's do that. And then I was like, oh, I love shooting hoops to warm up, so I need a basketball court. So, you know, over here, a hoop that comes down. Get the legs loose, the arms loose, just get the blood flowing. So the actual skate design of the obstacles i took it out on a piece of paper i guess that's the theme with me i have an idea i take it i try to draw it on a piece of paper because i'm no good with computers and uh, my friend mike roki who actually like physically built the park he has this really cool uh computer design where he took my little drawing and he like actually on the design made the specs like took measurements of the warehouse made the specs of it and like 
figured out how to actually make it happen. And then, yeah, they just, I was like, man, I wanna be able to listen to music. So they're like, oh, we can put speaker system through the whole thing. And then the actual like wall piece uh, being done, like my guy, Mike Rokey, like, um, he showed me some like ideas he saw and then he realized he could do it himself. He uh -huh. did it himself. Him and three guys did this whole wall band piece by piece, stained every piece, cut every piece, and did that whole design. It took over a month of <laughs> just them doing it every day. Wow, That's crazy. it's beautiful. And this part up here, my partner Jubal, who's co-CEO of Primitive, him and his design team kind of gave us a mood board for this part. And it's kind of like a, almost like a Japanese style feel to it. But up here, I just wanted to, you know, have a place to relax, to watch people skate, eat some food, kick it, play a little pool. Um, and then the other, the guys at Petronics I mentioned who did all the lighting, they're like, oh, I got this guy, he makes this really cool, like, sound sculpture systems. He wants to make one out of skateboards. So they made the skateboard chandelier, speakers all in it, you can make it all the different colors. He's like, oh, he also does really cool frames for the TV. So they made the cool, all made out of skateboard to frame the TV. Little by little, like you would have one idea. Oh, what about this? Can you do that? Like, oh, can we get a projector screen? So we got the projector screen here that it goes onto that wall. Then I was like, I need to have like a proper cigar lounge. Like I want to have a place where I can hang with the boys, kick back, smoke a cigar, and really like feel bossy, you know? Yep. So I'll come. I'll show you guys that. Oh, let's see that. Oh, well, I saw that the little door was open. I went, I don't know. So, I don't really show many people, but since you guys, you know, you guys are special. I see it. Here's the, uh, here's the real, my favorite part of the skate park, outside of the skate park. <laughs> so, in here, my little kind of like speakeasy, cigar lounge themed room. It's just about done. I need to decorate it a little more. It's a little plain, but as you can see, I'm smoking a couple of stogies with some friends. Got the TV and uh, the same company who did everything. They, they uh, made it look like an old school kind of TV. Yeah. Up here, I'm going to build like a little loft, carpet it up, put a bed up there, just like so I could even spend the night here if I want. There you go. And this is why my friend Mike earlier was getting on me about those emails because We'll probably see a couple cockroaches, so we got the exterminator coming. But here's my shower, uh, bathroom, so I don't have to go nowhere. I can just skate, shower, chill, eat lunch, watch some TV, relax, stretch out, ice up, skate again, and repeat the whole process. So. What more can you need as a professional skateboarder, huh? Exactly. I mean, it's pretty much overboard, <laughs> but why not? I think uh, here is the warm up slash recovery room, we're always foam rolling, stretch, we'll put on like some inspirational stuff on the TV, you know, stretch, loosen up, cool down after a set. Sometimes even have a chiropractor come in and, you know, crack you up and whatnot. Got the Norma Tex for the legs. This thing I recently got, I haven't got it activated, but it's a cryo chamber. Mm -hmm. So it just, it gets to like negative 100 something degrees. You go in there, there's a bunch of junk in there right now. You go in there, three minutes, and you freeze your ass off like your demolition man. I've done that a couple times. Yeah. It's not fun, but it feels good after. It feels great after. Yeah. And I like it better than an ice bath, because yeah. ice bath's like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Yeah. It's just three minutes. Yep. Um, so the goal is eventually, I want to put like a sauna in here, like an infrared sauna. Mm -hmm. Got a little closet, kind of janky closet back here that I just keep the extra clothes. Got a few extra pairs of shoes here. Oh, we got here. some shoes back here. Yeah, we got some shoes here. Don said I'm currently having the rotation of skating. Some sour apples that are a new yeah. release. Pink pigs. Pink pigs, sour apples. Yeah, you know, keep a couple extra pair of clothes, undies, whatnot in here. You know, just everything you need just to... Live your skating dream. It. Yep, and here it's empty still, but uh, I'm gonna make a little like room for my daughter, have bed, yeah. TV, all the, everything, so she can be here hanging out and kicking it with me. How long have you been in here? Uh, about two years. Two years? About two years we've had it, and it's like, I'll get new ideas, and we'll just keep adding to it, and so it's like always a work in progress, so it's like, I don't know if it'll ever officially get done. Yep. Eventually we're talking about putting like cabinets here, a little refrigerator, a little kind of kitchen almost area. This is the place, man. We just uh, skate, live the dream. I found one. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, so we got, we got the exterminator coming. We're gonna pop in some clips of him shredding this place. Not skating today, but 
put us some clips of shredding. And uh, again, this is like next level skate park. We go to skate parks all the time, but this, adding this aspect to it, it's like the lounge, everything. It's, you know, they say, glorified man cave but like this is like yeah. bigger than man cave shout out to rob dyrdek this this is my version of the fantasy factory this yep. is my fantasy factory and yeah i really wanted to like as it evolved i got the idea of like well this could be like almost like a culture hub like it doesn't have to just be for skaters like do things like we're doing now like yep. you know invite people over even invite other athletes like basketball players want to come by and shoot around that's nba regulation so there you go. come by hang yeah. out teach me a couple <laughs> tips on it and get my shot right you know and just had people shoot music videos here uh we've held contests here so it's kind of like i don't know it kind of became a thing that kind of just became like this culture hub and became more than just a park so so at least that's what i tell myself to justify all the yeah. excessiveness of it yeah great well thank you for showing us <laughs> yeah, this no and everything problem. else again thank you of course my pleasure thank you guys skateboarding you're like legends in our eyes you know we looked up to you we're we never came out to be any, anything good but it was just the love of going and getting out of the house skateboarding so thank you so much for allowing and being on video and showing the, you know, the the viewers on the channel and uh you guys hope you enjoyed seeing some of the shoes in here what he skates and uh we'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching see ya